Hello everyone, in this video we're going to uh, discuss how to compare uh, quadrature amplitude modulation schemes to quadrature amplitude modulation schemes uh, with respect to the rate, the bandwidth, the d minimum, the energy average per symbol and the symbol probability of error, the probability of symbol error. Okay? So in order to compare these, we have to fix something. So for example, if I want to compare the rate, then the bandwidth has to be constant. If I want to compare the d minimum, the energy has to be has to be fixed, has to be constant. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to divide the problem into two parts. In the first part, I'm going to compare the rate and I'm going to compare the bandwidth because the rate doesn't affect except the bandwidth. The bandwidth doesn't affect except the rate. Okay. So these two, if if any of them changes, it affects the other, but it does not affect the d minimum nor the energy nor the symbol error. Okay? Because this energy, remember that this energy is the simple energy, it is not the average energy per unit of time. That's the average energy per symbol. Okay? That's why it's not affected by the rate and it's not affected by the bandwidth. Okay? So that's why I need to comp when I want to compare the rate, I have to fix the bandwidth. Okay? So that's why I'm going to use the, the formula that, uh, that relates the bandwidth to the rate, which is this formula. It's a linear formula. It says that the, the, the bit rate, the number of bits per second, is equal to the bandwidth in hertz, okay, multiplied by the number of bits per symbol. Okay, where does this where does this equation come from? It comes from the symbol rate, okay, so the bit bit rate equals the symbol rate multiplied by how many bits per symbol. M here is the constellation size. Okay, so if I want to compare the rate, I'm going to write the equation twice. Once for the 64 quam and the second for the 16 quam. Okay, and then since I want to fix the bandwidth, then the bandwidth here is going to be equal to the bandwidth in the 16. Okay, do this calculation, divide the two equations by each other, you end up having that the 64 quam has a rate one and a half times that of the rate of the 16. Okay? Similarly, if I want to compare the bandwidth, what do I do? I need to fix the rate. So I put the equation twice as well, but in that, in that, in, in this time I'm going to assume that the RB equals RB. And that's why here B is B of the 64 quam and B of the 16 quam in the second equation. Divide the two equations by each other, you end up having that the, six, the bandwidth required to transmit a 64, a 64, uh, quam, uh, a 64 quam signal, it has to be 66% out of the that required to transmit a 16 quam signal. Why is that? Because when you have, when you fix the rate, then you do not need that much bandwidth in order to transmit the same amount of bits. Okay, you have, you could reduce. The size. Why? Because each symbol contains more bits, six, uh, two, three over two more bits than the symbol that in, in a 16 quam. Okay? So that's why the bandwidth required in the 64 is less than that of the 16. Let's here discuss what if I want to compare the d minimum of the 64 to the 16. What do I do? In that case, I need to fix the energy. Okay? Be why? Because the energy is affected by the d minimum, and the d minimum is affected by the energy. They have nothing to do with the rate and the bandwidth. And remember here, the energy here is the symbol energy, not the bit energy. E average is the average energy per symbol, not the average energy per bit. Average energy per symbol is the average energy per bit multiplied by how many bits I have in one symbol. Okay? So, fix the energy, put the equation, use that equation, and this equation is valid for any for any uh, square uh, quam, okay, which is, in that case, it's going to be a, uh, an even power, so any quam that has an even power, this equation is valid for that. So you can use this equation, energy average over energy average, so we have we fixed the energy averages, okay, but I have a variable d minimum, one for the 64 and one for the 16. When you do that calculation, you end up having a six, the d minimum of the 64, is roughly speaking half of that in the 16. Why does this make sense? Because when you, when you fix the energy, 
and you want to add more points to the constellation so that you can increase it from a 16 to 64 you have to reduce the size of this you have to reduce the size between each two constellation points why because if you want to because you basically want to fix the energy if you if you do not fix the size if you, if you uh, do not reduce the size but otherwise keep it fixed and you start adding more constellation points then in that case you end up having a a larger energy why it's larger energy because this is, is transmitted by 1 volts this is transmitted let's say by 3 vo uh, volts this is transmitted by 5 volts when you increase the constellation size you end up transmitting more symbols with higher voltage which means that the energy is going to be increased okay that's why whenever we have to fix the energy we should reduce the const we should reduce the minimum distance so that we can increase the constellation size the other way around goes for the for the energy if you want to uh, calculate the value of the energy given a fixed d minimum then you expect that the energy is going to increase and in that case it increases for times that of the energy of the 16. Why? Because fixing the d minimum, increasing the concentration size, increases the energy. Okay? And this is the equation that we use. Okay, so right now we have learned how to deal with the d minimum and the energy. And as you can see, it's roughly speaking kind of like a linear relation. Okay? Of course it's a quadratic relation, but you can deal with it without having any numbers. You can have the ratio between the two and then compare them to each other, divide the two equations and compare them. However, when we, when we are asked for the probability of symbol error, the probability of symbol error that governs the quadrature amplitude modulation schemes is not a linear equation, nor even a polynomial. Okay? It's, it has the error, the complementary error function. And that is why I should have, I should substitute by numbers whenever I have such an equation and I need to compare the 64 to the 16. Okay? So the question would then be, what do I need to fix? If I want to compare the probability of symbol error, I have to either fix the energy or fix the d minimum. Okay? So what am I going to fix? And the, the problem is asking me to fix the, uh, the energy average per symbol. Okay? Fix it to E average per symbol over n node is equal to 10 units per unit. Okay? So it's a unitless quantity. In that case, you can substitute directly, and remember that this is the E average, the, the formula has E average per symbol, not E average per bit, okay? And then you need to uh, directly substitute and then end up having that number, okay? Remember that here I've, I've used the error, the complementary error function. If you want to use the Q function, then you could substitute by this, by the error function, and replace it with the Q function. But remember, you need to multiply by 2 outside, and you need to multiply by square root of 2 inside. Okay? That's if you have the, the tables of the Q function and not the error function. Okay? So you're, you're uh, free to use whatever you want. Okay? And remember that this is the probability of symbol error, and this formula cannot, so this is not the probability of bit error, okay? That's the symbol error. And this formula it, it cannot be used for any quam. It has to be a power of even. Okay? If you use it for a power of odd, you might end up having a probability of error higher than one. Okay? So now you might be asking, yeah, okay, so why did we end up having a probability of error higher than half? Although the probability of error should not exceed half. Well, that's the probability of symbol error, it's not the probability of bit error. If it were to be the probability of bit error, then you would be right but this is the probability of symbol error, which means that on average, when I transmit one symbol, 85% of the symbols transmitted, I get them wrong, okay? And the reason is because the energy average per, per end node is pretty small, okay? If you, decree, if you fix the energy average per symbol, and you decrease the, of course that's 16, and you decrease the constellation size, you end up having a smaller error, a smaller error rate, a smaller symbol error rate. Okay? At the expense, of course, of the rate of transmission, bit rate of transmission. Okay? 
What if you want to calculate the probability of bit error? Then in that case, you have to consider what the constellation size looks like, how the mapping between the bits to the constellation is done. And if I assume that it is a gray code, then in that case, I can use this approximate formula. The bit error rate is equal to the symbol error rate divided by how many bits I have per symbol. Why is this formula correct? Or like, why does this make sense? Because whenever I have an error in one symbol, so it means that most likely I'm going to decode it to the adjacent. I'm going to decode the adjacent symbol instead. That's how I make error. And in that case, when I decode the adjacent, the adjacent symbol, then I'm going to, as then in that case, I'm going to, uh, to have just one bit of error. So if I have a 64 poem, I have six bits in one symbol. If I make an error in one symbol, only one bit is going to be wrong, while the rest five bits are going to be decoded correct. And that's why I have decoded five bits, so that's why I need to divide by six. So that's log 64, which is equal to six. Okay? And this is, of course, a rough estimate. It's not exact. Okay? So what if I'm asked to find the, to compare the probability of error given that the d minimum is fixed to a constant? In that case, you need to calculate first the value of the energy average using this formula, right? And then after that, you substitute in the probability of error equation. And this is why we ended up having 44% of error and 23% of error in the 16 quad. Okay? And remember here, when I say that this is 2 volt, I'm assuming, of course, there's an, a hidden assumption that the, uh, when I calculate the energy average, I'm assuming that the antenna that I'm receiving on has a value of resistance equals 1 ohm. Okay? And that's why this ended up in joules. Okay, so the, what we take away out of this problem is that whenever we have to compare quadrature amplitude uh, modulation schemes to each other, we have to fix something and and make sure make sure that everything is fixed and compare whatever we want to compare. The rate affects the bandwidth. The bandwidth affects the rate. The minimum energy and the probability of error all three affect each other, but they do not affect the bandwidth nor the rate. Okay. If you found this uh, video useful, uh, make sure to share it with somebody else. Most likely other people want it as well. And uh, do not forget to ask me any questions if you have any.